Hello and welcome to another video. I am the False God. We're going to be going and looking at our build for Berry Toast. I'm just doing a little national overview. We are uh, going to be playing in a new player game with them. In fact, it's already it's already started a little bit, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and we're going to look at my Pretender God. This is the Fellowship of the Ring. Not quite to remember the password. Perfect, okay. So we've gone ahead and gone with a gray one pretender. So this is a, a triple, or trinity. So we'll get all three of these guys and the paths will be split. I don't remember the exact, I think it's death and water. Um, oh, sorry, they all have death and water. And then there's a, a blood and nature, a fire and earth, and air and astral. So they're going to get a lot of cool paths out of this, um, but they won't. None of them will have all the paths. So, in some ways, that's, you know, obviously a drawback, but getting three pretenders so you can twice born and then throw out there is pretty useful. For scales, we have six dominion, uh, three turmoil. I don't, we don't want a ton of recruitment points. We just don't want that many. Our troops are not very good. Uh, so I think we're okay with some, some turmoil. It's going to help us pay. No, uh, no productivity. We need some three heat. And then we've got some growth, some luck and some magic and then we've got the bless uh this is obviously a big rainbow uh, attack is going to help so our sacreds are only okay but this is really for our demons our sayer who are tremendous and we can summon lots of them uh swiftness and some shock resistance is nice i went with swiftness instead of major shock resistance even though there's a couple of nations in the game because this is going to help us with expansion more on our um our sacreds and I'm more worried about expansion than I am about losing late game to air magic. Uh, lots of bonus defense. It's going to be great. Some strength. Uh, MR, our Seer and Sacreds do not normally have it. So this is sort of really uh, relatively required to keep them useful throughout the game when things like Fog Warriors start coming up. Uh, Undying is only because I didn't need three Undead Command. Uh, undead Command is pretty useful. You have very little of it nationally. And you like summoning lots of demons. So having Undead Command is pretty darn useful. And then Poison Resistance and Blood Surge. Uh, the Poison Resistance, you are very vulnerable to Foul Vapors without. And then Blood Surge is obviously just a great um, way to get some extra stats on kill units. Which, uh, for the most part, we have. So, that is uh, the god. Let's go ahead and look at Berytos. Um, and what they sort of get access to. So moving uh, left to right, you have a nice cheap scout, 25 gold. Nothing to write home about. They're just, uh, you know, they're just a good scout, a uh, good cheap scout. That's all you want. Your captains have 80 leadership and sailing, uh, which is pretty nice. You can run into problems with sailing, uh, in that you can't sail anybody who isn't just a regular human. That's going to mean no cavalry, no colossi, and no elephants. And your troops. We'll get to the troops. But you can only sail these guys around. But 80 leadership's nice. Does formations. Good for morale. The mage pilot only recruited... <coughs> let me recruit in coastal forts. One air, one water, nine research for 80 gold. I'm not entirely sure when or why one would go about getting these. You have a guaranteed air path. So if you've got a storm caster, you can go up to air two and cast like lightning bolts. Uh, eventually they can do like frozen heart spam. But they only have the nine research, and when we go ahead and compare them to the Barrys and Sage, who's Earth and then gets one of those two paths, the research is better. So, as Barrytos, you have a problem. You have a problem potentially. You have a an issue where you've got some like you've got a research monkey, right? This guy is not a combat mage, and again, until you get Frozen Heart, or again maybe with Storm Up. You don't have a lot that you guys you're gonna to want to bring these guys into combat for, but they are 80 gold for 11 research, so that's pretty good. That's the best you're gonna do. So you definitely want some of them uh, researching, but there is some concern for your sort of ability uh, to bring them into a fight. So if you overproduce them, you will find yourself with a mage core that doesn't do anything. Next up is your priest, 140 gold. Uh, but he is sacred, of course. He's a blood one, and then you can pick up another blood or air 
I'm sorry, air, fire, earth. Um, so these are useful uh, mostly because they're going to be your primary blood hunters. You need them to lead uh, parties of sacreds early. Um, they can communion up or Sabbath up. So these are really useful. They're less efficient researchers than your sages. So you sort of, anytime these guys are, are researching, you wish you had a sage. And anytime you need to do anything else, you kind of wish you had these guys. So there's a bit of tension there. Uh, the Stormcaller is coastal forts only. Two air, two water, and then you pick up either another air, water, or an astral of fire. This is your nation's only astral access, so it's one out of four on a slow to recruit mage. But you definitely want to get some of them. And then the fire ones are going to be able to do all your acid spells and make a rune smasher, etc. Air threes can, with some help, cast storm. Um, water threes, water elementals, maybe. I'm not sure exactly what you do with the water threes, but yeah, you can forge stuff. So, very useful mage. Um, they're going to be good for air elementals, uh, water elementals. They can do big, they can do like freezing mist, I think, is the big uh, evocation they can do. Um, certainly going to be useful. They're going to help you site search, right? And again, you're only astral. But just having one astral on means that you can get to arbitrarily high fire. Uh, air or water in combat with some help. And then finally, your big cap-only mage. This is a an 8-path mage with a small chance at a 9th path and priest level 2. Uh, fire, air, earth, and blood. And then you pick up another one of those and then a chance at another one. These are, these are a tremendous unit. They cost a ton. You know, 415. I mean, this is this is a you know, a lot of gold for an 18 health unit. They are size 3, they have 18 health, not, you know, the 12 or a 10 of a normal human. So it is 50% more, but it's also not, you know, a Rephite 60 health. And the gold cost is much closer to them than it is to a lot of human mages. But they can do all your elementals. They're going to be giant casters. You're going to be using them early for blood magic. Um, they can do magma bolts. Um, they can also, the air ones can cast can cast your storm for you. Uh, Thunder strike. Tremendously useful mage. Great sight searchers. Obviously, they're going to cover four paths plus holy. Uh, the spear is not super relevant. You could maybe thug them with a lot of gear. But I, I don't think you really want to do that. Unless you're really out of options. So, yeah. So, for, as far as mages... These are the ones you're going to be, or sorry, these are the ones you're going to be mainly recruiting, and you want enough of these to research, and then everybody else, these are going to be the base of your, your blood economy, and you're going to need them for combat, so you want a lot of these. And then these you're going to pick up in their respective, you know, in the capital, you're mostly going to recruit these, and then in your first water fort, you're going to recruit a bunch of these. So, uh, all four of these are very useful, this one, not so much. Um, your troops are garbage. I mean, they, they can, they, you know, They've got some uses, um, but Bariton Militia are just Militia. And they're just as bad as Militia are. Same, your archers are just regular archers. Nine, nine damage short bow. Just a regular archer. Spearmen have javelins. These are going to be useful for expansion, but again, they're, they're pretty trash. You're going to have them for a while uh, as your line holders, potentially. And the soldier is going to be a slightly better line holder. He's got a short sword, which is better than the spear, probably, but no javelin. You've got heavy spearmen, who've got formation fighter. It's going to help them, you know, bunch together in a square, take point buffs. But they're not really... It's hard to say that you're going to really be going out of your way to point buff these guys. They are pretty weak, so... You know, if you can, it's nice, but it's not like a, an integral part of your strategy, probably. And then the Baratine Elite Soldier has better stats and deals more damage than the Spearman, but doesn't have that formation fighter and has a length one weapon as opposed to a length four weapon. So these guys, you know, get some good repels on. The Baratine Lancer has a light lance, not a heavy lance, um, and no other attacks. Somehow his horse does not have a hoof. These guys are pretty fast, uh, 26 combat speed. They don't cost a ton to recruit. They're not going to do very well against players, though. So even if they're okay at expansion, you're sort of going to be left with this pile of units that aren't super effective. They, I mean, they can harass the back. They're not totally useless, but 
they're okay. Um, I, you know, I don't know that you want a ton of them. You might want a squad or two to try and pick off undefended mages in the back. There's certainly no heavy cab. The Colossi are our sacreds, and we're going to be relying on these a lot for our expansion. Uh, 35 gold. They're Colossi. They have 22 hit points. They're size 3. Decent protection. Um, okay, MR and morale. Nothing great, though. Um, they cost a, a bit of resources. We're definitely getting resource constrained early. Uh, and the rest of their stat, you know, 15 defense is pretty good. 12 attacks, very average. Strength is okay. But these are what we're going to be, and they're good as bodyguards, I suppose. These are what we're going to be blessing up at the beginning of the game and relying on to keep us alive through probably our first war. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking at, I think, there. And then elephants are elephants. They're great at trampling stuff. We're going to probably have a couple of them. For our, Usually I recruit in the first party, so elephants, to help out. But they're pretty expensive. They absolutely can get killed when they run off on their own into the enemy. They're likely, you know, terrible morale, so they'll break and kill your own guys. you got to be kind of careful when using them. But, and they're not very great against players. But they have some uses. You can try and buff them up and put, like, Gift of Flight on them. And, like, Body Ethereal. So you can do some cool stuff. But in general, I don't think you want a ton of elephants. They're just too costly for what they do. Well, let's go ahead real quick and look at the... Let's jump into a random berry toast game just so we can see the spells. This is just, I did a little sample, little sample expansion. Uh, so this is, I was fiddling around with this and I don't you know, like being people who are standing around. But this is turn 13. We have 3, 9, 13, 17, 21 provinces on turn 13. So not too bad. You know, we were mostly using these squads of a priest who's, uh, this, I think they lost people. I don't remember. I was, again, I said this wasn't, uh, this is maybe closer. Yeah, it's usually a priest in like between five and ten. What I found with five was that you usually, five class, I usually get the job done and you win the fight. But you have a chance of losing some. With ten, you're much less likely. Uh, the class I will beat a lot of things. Without too much issue, you want to be careful, obviously, and send them against things like elephants. Uh, some of, like, a bone tribe is potentially dangerous. Um, so, a couple things to watch out for with them, but they, they usually expand pretty well. I think on this map, so this is the map we're playing on. This is Lucid's anti-dog pile map. So, you have, so these uh, mountains are impassable, like, you can't fly over them or teleport past them. It's like the territories just don't connect. So, you're going to get this little core nine lands, and then this column. You then go into the column, and there's these little paths through to lead to other columns. So, like, this person is actually not really a, uh, a potential fight with, for us, because to get there, you have to go out of here, in this case, right, you can go through this mountain if it's heat, and then through this throne, and then you can make your way up. Which is pretty difficult. Your real targets, or enemies, right, are this guy and this guy. So, Kind of, so you really you can fight up to two people at once for the most part. It's going to be difficult to to fight uh, more than that. And the idea is is mostly again early game. It's hard to dogpile and kill somebody, like what happened to the poor monkeys in our hit on game. So it's kind of neat. We'll see how it goes. Um, but anyway, the reason we came here is to talk about research and what we think are potentially good research sort of options. So we are generally a nation that's considered to be a rush target and you're going to need <coughs> your research to help keep you alive and there's a couple of key spells which can do that so conjuration obviously gives access to the phoenix power the powers uh, some earth power those are going to be very useful to help and then obviously on five you may get elementals tremendously useful alteration is going to be good particularly for earth meld it's going to be very helpful if we run into elves or other really high defense enemies. Otherwise, we don't want too much alteration early. We don't really have any thugs to use it with. But so alteration two uh, is potentially a good investment. Uh, evocation is usually a trap, but we have access to some pretty decent evocations. Um, in particular, freezing mist is one that our 
some of our um, storm callers can do, and that's very effective. Magma bolts is not bad. Uh, sulfur haze also potentially good. So we we have access to some of the good cross path uh, evocations, and then eventually we obviously have access to storm and thunderstrike if we go up to five, which is another good option. Construction we definitely want construction two uh, when we can get it to make quills to help our research. Construction 4 is going to make sanguine dowsing rods to help our blood economy. Uh, enchantment has some useful stuff, particularly for us, terracotta army and flaming arrows, potentially. Uh, but that's going to come a little later. I don't think that we're going to prioritize enchantment. That's If you're picking aggressive war, you might want to wait until you've got potentially flaming arrows, depending on your matchup. But for defense, which is what we're going to be aiming at, I think that we're going to stick up here for, the, for a little bit. Thaumaturgy, I don't think we're going to be going into... Too quickly, it's got a lot of stuff we want. Aspects, no more. Augury. But those are all economy things, and we need to make sure that we don't die first. And then blood's going to be really useful. Um, level 1 of blood's going to get us summon imps uh, and the sabbaths, which are going to be good. We can use summon imps to help expand, potentially. The sabbaths, obviously, are key uh, for potentially putting up some bigger magic early. Agony is pretty decent for an early defense as well. So we're probably going to want to go uh, Blood 1 and Blood 2. Scapegoats makes the Sayer, which is our big um, sacred unit that we want. We do have to make sure that we can use it, and we need to get a Wasteland to do so. So I think those are probably our research goals. It'll depend who we're up against, exactly what we want to do. Uh, so we'll sort of make that choice when we get there. And we're going to hope that we have a Wasteland, as you need Sayer. Or you need a Wasteland to summon Sayer. Um... And then there's a decent number of pawns in each of the columns. So, pretty good chance at, at getting some coastal forts. Uh, the bigger problem is the wastelands, right? Like, if we look at this column, there's one here. There you go, there's one here. And that's it for this column. Uh, this column has this one on a throne. And there's some over here. So, we could be, and there's one there. Uh, so we could be in some, so that, like this column just has a lot more, a lot more wastelands. So we could be, where we could be at some risk of not finding a wasteland. Which, if we don't, we're going to have to go and, and survive without it, and then try and go and take it. Um, but that is uh, sort of our Baritos plan. Um, it'll be another new player game, so hopefully you should run into... Hopefully, not as not everybody will be aware that it is a uh, a rush nation, and we won't get absolutely murked. Uh, but if uh, they do come after us, we'll do our best. I wanted to pick. I, I decided to pick Barry Toast One because um, they still get access to mail carts. Um, down here, you can now you can summon a mail cart. So just like my, uh, we can be hit them all over again, uh, which is fun. But I wanted to, so they're, in a lot of ways, they're, while they still have access to Melkarts and the Shenim and the Sayer, they play very differently from Hinnom. Hinnom has the big giants. Um, they don't have all their cross paths. They're, well, obviously, all the nations have finesse. I was, you know, sort of able to use them as a relatively blunt instrument and still find some success. I don't think that's going to be the case with Baritos, right? We don't have giants. We have Colossi at best. We're going to need to really rely on our, our mage core to help us win fights because our troops suck. You know, we don't have ref fights and chariots. Um, and Hinnom, I think, is very strong early, and Baritos is very weak. So it's sort of a, a big difference. I also, I, you know, I think this comes up in my, my Hinnom video where I'm like, I know what to do with death and nature gems and everything else. You know, I'm unclear. Uh, Baritos has no access to death or nature outside of heroes. So, and the god. Uh... So we're trying to push, you know, push a little bit on what I know how to do and hopefully learn a lot from playing a nation that plays very differently and uh, has access to a lot of different resources. So hopefully I can take these strategies, right? Because while yeah, uh, I mean, things like Hinnom still has access to the fire and the, the earth, and hopefully I, I take some good strategies from here and be able to apply it, you know, next time we play Hinnom. Or maybe even in, I haven't finished the Hinnom game by a long shot, so maybe even in the Hinnom game we're playing now. Um, but that uh, that's Baritos. We're gonna do we're gonna do our best, and uh, and see how it goes. Thanks, everybody.
for watching and have a nice day.